welcome to the Marley Bird YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to knit the Cheerful Cable Slipper Sock. These slipper socks are perfect for gifting. These cable slipper socks will be appreciated all winter long. This knit pattern is written for three sizes, so you can custom fit to the wearer. To knit these socks, the first thing you need to do is download the free pattern, which is available at redheart.com. I'll put a link to the pattern and the full materials list in the video description box right down there below. The next thing you need to do is follow along with this three-part video series. I've broken up the construction of the sock so that way you can make these socks in little bits and that way you can follow along with each bit of the pattern as you come to it. The last thing I need you to do is to make sure you smash that like button as my kids say to let other people know you enjoy this video. Go ahead, get your pattern and your materials Join me back here and we'll do a little prep work for the pattern and then we'll jump in and get started on the cuff and the leg. I recently had a friend tell me that for Christmas, she used to give her kids pajamas and so they all had matching pajamas. Then as they've gotten older, she has transitioned and she gives them all socks. Now they might not be hand knit socks, but why not? Let's go ahead and make some really cute slipper socks that are great for the holidays or if you have cold feet, they're good for year round. Before we jump in with the actual making of the socks, I want to run down the materials and a little prep on the pattern that I want you to do. For this pattern, you will need one or two balls of Red Heart with Love Metallic. Now it's one ball for the small or medium size, two balls for the larger size. And that is written in your pattern. Now here is the pattern right here and you'll notice that I have already highlighted a lot of sections in the pattern. What I want you to do is print off your pattern or get it in a program on your iPad or computer, whatever you need to do that allows you to do some highlighting. I want you to highlight all the numbers that pertain to the size you're going to make. Because I wanna make these for my mom, I'm making the women's medium. So I've gone ahead and I've highlighted women's medium. So that way, if I ever am in doubt to what size I'm making, I know that that's my intended size. Then I've gone through all of the instructions and wherever the number is, one within the parenthesis, because that's where the women's medium size is, I've highlighted it, highlighted it. And then when I get to the leg pattern, it works normal, but then I get to the setup for the heel, you'll notice that the heel pattern is written where it says only for small, only for the medium, and then on the next page, it'll say only for large. So I've gone ahead and I've highlighted the only for medium. So I know that I only need to highlight or work those instructions. As you carry on, you can see it comes down here at the turn heel. It says only for small, only for medium, only for large again. So I make sure that I only highlighted the medium for the size I'm making. And then once again, where it has a whole bunch of numbers given, for the different sizes. I've highlighted everything that pertains to the medium size. Do you have to do it this way? No, but I will tell you that in all of my beginner knitting sock classes that I've taught at my local yarn store, inevitably people who choose not to highlight their number on their pattern that they're making regret it because they will get off off track they will accidentally use the wrong number so it just really is good to take the time highlight the numbers that pertain to you and your size whatever size you're making so that way you can follow along with the pattern okay so once you have done the highlighting of the pattern, you'll also notice over here in the instructions, it gives you a full list of all the items you need. So I included a tape measure because you will have to work to a certain number of inches on a couple parts. You need a cable needle, some stitch markers, a good pair of scissors, and five double pointed needles. Now the designer Sandy Rosner used a US size nine to achieve the gauge. So I've gone ahead and pulled out my US size nine, which are a 5.5 millimeter needle and I want to make sure that I have a pack of five. 
If you are out at the store shopping for needles and you only see packs of four, I'm so sorry, you're gonna have to just buy two packs so that way you get five needles, okay? Can you transition this pattern to work on three needles? Absolutely, and if you are an advanced enough knitter to go ahead and do that, I will encourage you to do so. But if you are not familiar with double points, this is your first foray into double points, it's best to just follow along with the pattern the way it's written. And Sandy has it written using five double points, okay? So all of that is uh, loud and clear. So let's go ahead and get started with the actual cuff of the pattern. When working with the With Love Metallic, this is a ball of yarn. This is not a skein, so it's not technically made to have the yarn pulled from the center. You're supposed to pull it from the outside. There is an entire blog post about that on the Red Heart blog, so you can go and check that out if you want. Having said that, if you are not uncomfortable with yarn guts, I don't know how else to say it, you can pull from the center. So I'm going into the center, and I'm just pulling out. I got lucky, look, that's all the yarn guts I have. And so I can start with these, um, with these guts, that sounds awful. <laughs> I can start with this yarn coming from the middle and I'll be good going on. Some of you might end up with more or less. The good news is you'll be using it all along the way, so it really doesn't matter too much. So I'm pulling my yarn from the center I will go ahead and cast on the number of stitches I need for the size I'm making. And when I highlighted that number, it is 40 stitches. And I wanna make sure I distribute those 40 stitches around four needles. So I'm going to use the long tail cast on. And so I wanna make sure I have a long enough tail to get around all 40 stitches. And I know that that's plenty. So I will start off with my slip knot. Place that slip knot directly onto my needle, and I will start off by placing 10 stitches on this needle. Once you get the total number of stitches cast onto your needle, we're gonna continue on with the no cuss cast on to put the next set of stitches on the next needle. Don't be discouraged, we're still using the long tail cast on, but what we're gonna do is grab a new needle and rest it right up next to that ridge that we've created with the long tail cast on and place that new needle extended up just ever so slightly. Make sure that your yarn is still coming from the bottom of the needle, it's not draped over your new needle at all, and then reposition your hands to do the long tail. This time, when you do the long tail cast on, Cast on that stitch onto the new needle and the first one, make sure it's really close up to the last stitch of the previous needle. Then continue on placing all the stitches you need on that needle for your set. For me, it will be 10. Once you have your stitches on that needle, we will continue on, grab the new needle, place it right up next to the needle we just finished with, extend it up a little bit, and then continue on with my long tail cast on. I do wanna make sure that that very first stitch is nice and close to that last one. Okay, so there's 10 there. I'm gonna push these needles up just a little bit so they don't fall anywhere. I'll grab my last needle because I want 40 stitches. So I have 10, 20, 30. I'm gonna have 40 by the time I get 10 onto this needle. Again, I have all my needles in place. Notice I'm holding them all. You don't wanna let them fall apart. Place the next needle right up next to the needle you finished and do your cast on. I have all the stitches there, which is perfect. I have plenty of tail left over. Look at that, there it is. So I can set my stitches down, okay? So here are my needles. I'm gonna go ahead, rotate them just like so, and follow along with me here. This should be something that you're able to do right with me. 
I'm going to grab the last needle that I used and hang on to it. These three needles, I'm going to have them swing around just like so. And notice I had that needle come to the top of the first one. Now I'll grab that previous needle. So this was my needle four that I used. Now I'm going to needle three. I'm going to rotate these two needles just like so. Now I'm going to grab my what would have been my needle two. Make sure my needle one is going on top and rotate it around. And what I want you to see here is we have this nice ridge that we have created with our long tail cast on. All of the purl bumps of that ridge are on the inside of our work. We don't have any twisted stitches. And the first stitch we cast on, which was our slip stitch, is now meeting up to the last stitch we cast on, which makes it a really great transition point for us to go into our two by two ribbing. So what we will do here is my needles are like so. I'm just gonna make them so they're sort of like, I don't know, a diamond so that these are pointing towards me. I'm going to use my fifth needle making sure I don't use my tail and I want to make sure that my yarn is coming from the inside of that circle. Okay. I want to go ahead and knit into this stitch with the yarn coming from that stitch. And I'm going to start off with this on the table to hopefully better show you guys how this works. Because one of the number one things a lot of beginner knitters will have trouble with when they're starting with double points is having these needles flop all over the place. So let's leave it on the table here to start. And I'm going to take my fifth needle. I am going to place it into this stitch just like I was going to knit. Okay. So I just went in it just like I'm going to knit. Now I will take my yarn, this is my yarn, and I will yarn over that fifth needle, okay? Now that I've yarned over that needle, I pull that needle through the stitch just like I would if I were any sort of knitting, okay? And then I let that stitch jump off the needle. You see how loose everything is right now? We don't want it that loose, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull on our working yarn, okay? And wiggle this needle we just knit onto to make sure that this stitch we just knit is nice and close to that stitch where the yarn just came from, okay? That's really important. Once you get that nice and tight, we then want to make sure we knit the next stitch nice and tight. So go into your next stitch, yarn over your needle, come out, and off and make sure that's nice and tight. By this point, you should be able to pick up your needles and continue on. So we're gonna ignore these three needles. We're just using this needle we're knitting off of and our fifth needle we're knitting on too. I just knit, did knit two. So I'm gonna go into purl two. So I moved my yarn between my needles to the front and now I will purl two. Bring my yarn to the back between my needles and I will knit two. To the front between my needles and I will purl two. To the back between my needles and I will knit two. Now, what I don't like about this is that I am ending on two knits on this needle. And so now that's, that's finished, right? So what I'm gonna do is I need to now go to this needle. So I'm gonna rotate my work clockwise. Okay, so now I've positioned this needle into my, where it's in my left hand ready to knit. My yarn is coming off the needle that I just finished. Now that the first stitch on our next needle has to be a purl, it's a little bit tricky because it's harder to keep those stitches nice and tight between the needle joints, but it is possible. Make sure you've moved your yarn between your needles to the front. Take your right hand needle, go into the stitch as if to purl, yarn over your needle and pop out that stitch and off. Make sure you pull that stitch nice and snug, once again, so that that one is nice and close to that one. 
And then in order to hold it in place, we also need to make sure the next stitch is nice and snug. So I just purled two, so now I'll knit two. So I'm gonna hold my yarn in my opposite hand. And don't worry if you feel like this is fiddly here at the start, if you've never used double points, it's perfectly natural feeling to have a little bit of feeling like you're all thumbs here at the very start. You notice I'm still just doing my knit two, purl two ribbing, and I'm ignoring those other needles that are kind of flopping around, I'm just ignoring them. Move that, move my stitches to the center, rotate my work clockwise, put my stitches in place, and I finished with two purls, so I'll start off with two knits. Remember, you wanna make sure that the first two stitches are nice and snug. I always shift my stitches to the center of the needle so that way they don't accidentally fall off and then I push them into play when it's time to work with them again. Here is my purl and here's my second purl. Notice I pull those really nice and snug and then I go into my knit two purl two. We made it through the first full round. All right, we just finished round one of the cuff. So now we have to work rounds two through nine, working the two by two ribbing pattern. I will go ahead and add my stitch marker right here to the start, so that way you guys know where the start of the round is. I'm gonna place it right here at the bottom of that last stitch on my needle four. If you don't have stitch markers, you can always just find your tail. It's always attached to the last stitch of the round. Let's go ahead and continue on in our two by two ribbing until we get to round 10, because then we have to work an eyelet row, which is where we will include the eye cord and the pom poms later on. It's a lot of fun. All right, I have just finished round 10 of my cuff and I'm getting ready to begin round 11. So I will follow along round 11 and it's my eyelet round. So we start off with a knit two. So I will knit two stitches and now I want to do a yarn over. So I'm gonna take my yarn, I'm gonna bring it forward between my needles and then rotate it back over top of my right hand needle. It looks like there's just a strand sitting on my right hand needle and that's exactly what it is and I want to make sure it stays there. So I like to put my finger there. Now what I need to do is a purl two together with these two purl stitches. So my yarn is over top of my needle. I need to bring it back between my needles back to the front. See how now that looks like that wrap is completely around my needle? It's important you see that otherwise you will lose your yarn over. Now that my yarn is in front, I can work my purl two together, which is simply taking my right hand needle and putting it into those next two stitches as if to purl, and then literally purling them together. So I took two stitches and made them one. My stitch count is going to stay the same though because that yarn over now counts as a stitch. I will repeat this all the way around. So I will knit two, Bring my yarn between my needles, over top my right hand needle, and then back to the front between my needles. So there's my yarn over, and then I do a purl two together. Knit two. I'm to the end of my needle, so I transition just like I normally do, rotate clockwise. Now, here's a tricky part. I knit two, and I need to start off here with the yarn over and a purl two together. 
So what I need to do is I'm gonna take this needle and I'm gonna put it behind that yarn. Okay, can you see I'm behind that yarn? And then I'm gonna hold that in place and bring my yarn forward, okay? See how it looks like it's wrapped around just like it did before? And I'm making sure that yarn over and wrap is really close to that one knit stitch that I ended with. Now I will do my purl two together. Okay, so now I have this yarn over here. Remember that you put that there because it will look like you have accidentally picked up a stitch when in reality, you didn't accidentally pick up a stitch, you purposely picked up a stitch, okay? Now we'll go on and we'll knit two, yarn over, bring your yarn back to the front between the needles and purl two together. My yarn's getting caught on my needles. Knit two, yarn over, purl two together. I'm at the end of my needle, so I transition. I'm going to do this all the way to the end of the round. Remember when you start the next needle, when it has the start of two purls, you want to put your yarn behind that string, behind your working yarn, have your working yarn wrap around it and come back to the front and then do your purl two together. All right, I'm at the end of my round here, which is great. And everything is nice and good. And it will look funny here with these yarn overs that you started off with. It will look like you accidentally picked up a stitch, but remember you did that on purpose. So don't drop those off, okay? Once you finish this part of the cuff with the eyelets, you will now move into the leg of the sock. The leg of the sock is worked over a cable stitch pattern that works eight rounds, okay? So you will repeat those eight rounds until you get a total of 32 rounds completed for the leg of the sock. I wanna walk you through those eight rounds to start off here so that way you know how to do the actual cable stitches and more importantly, how to transition from this eyelet round to the cable stitch pattern. So let's go ahead and do that now. The leg portion of this sock starts off with round one, and round one has us do knit six, purl two. So we just finished our eyelet row, so when we do our knits, one of those knit stitches is going to be that yarn over. Now I want you to see what that looks like. See how funny that looks? It looks like there's just a string resting on our needle. That's what it is supposed to look like. You simply will go into that stitch and knit it. So that was knit three, four, five, and six. Now I wanna go ahead and I will purl two. Now this time I'm coming up to my yarn over and I will purl it. So I bring my yarn forward and just like before, I will go into that stitch, just like normal, and purl it. So there's purl one and purl two. That's my repeat. I want to repeat that all the way around. So let's do our knit two. And then we've got four more knits to do. This is my yarn over, remember, see that? There's my yarn over that looks goofy. I want to just knit it just like normal. There's one, two, three, four, making that six. And now I'll purl two, so purl one, purl two. 
knit one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then purl two. One, two. This should be my last repeat. One, two, three, whoops, four, five, and six. Oh, I got one more repeat after this. And then purl two. So purl one and purl two. Knit six. And purl two. Purl one and purl two. All right, so we just finished round one of the cable pattern. And we've essentially established all of our stitches. We have six knits and two purls all the way around. Once you get past this row, the next row has us work some cable stitches. Now, if you've never done cables before, don't be scared. First off, you've already tackled double pointed needles, and that is far more difficult than working cable stitches. So you are already ready to go with this, I promise. I'll start off here, and I will rotate. And we're going to begin with a two by two left cable. And if you look at the special stitches, you'll see the two by two left cable has a slip two stitches onto a cable needle. Whenever you slip stitches, you always slip as if to purl. Slip two stitches as if to purl. Put them onto your cable needle. Now we will go ahead and knit the next two stitches. Knit one knit two, okay? So these were one and two, let's say these are A and B. We've just knit A and B, but now we have to come back and we have to actually knit one and two. So we will put one and two back on the needle. We're just gonna put those back on our needle. And now we will knit one and two, just like they were never moved so like they were right there the whole time. And we have just created a two by two left cable. Pretty easy, right? Now we'll go ahead, knit the next two stitches, purl two stitches, and then repeat. Ah, two of our stitches are here, and whoops, two of our stitches are over here. So what should we do? Because we have to cable all of those stitches. Here's what I'm going to do. I am actually going to place these two knit stitches onto this next needle. So that way they're in the correct place for me to be able to work the cable stitch. So now this needle has more than 10 stitches that I started with because I want those on the same needle so I can actually cable with them, okay? Now I go ahead and I repeat the two by two left cable. So I will slip two stitches as if to purl, knit the following two stitches. Oh, did you see what I just did? I grabbed the th that needle. I need this one. Don't make that mistake. I do that all, quite often. Make sure you grab your fifth needle knit those two stitches, and then the two stitches you moved, you wanna place those back on your needle. And yes, you could knit those directly off of the cable needle, but I don't like to do that. I like to always move them back to my needle. I feel like that makes them the right size. I don't know why, I just do. But then I just knit them from that needle, okay? Then I will knit two and purl two. the end of my repeat. I'm here to four stitches. They're all right here in the same place, so I don't need to move those over at all, but I do need to create the cable. So I will slip these first two stitches as if to purl, hold those to the front, knit two stitches, and then place these two stitches back on my left hand needle and knit them. OK. 
Okay. Rotate my needles. You'll notice it doesn't look like much. These little cables that we're creating, they don't look like much yet. It takes a little bit of time to get them going. I'm gonna, oops, I was supposed to be knit, so I will knit two. Purl two. And then I'm ready to do my cable again. Pretty simple. Slip those stitches to your cable needle, hold them to the front, knit the next two stitches from the left hand needle, place those slip stitches back onto the left hand needle, and then knit those. Okay, now we're at knit two. I'm going to rotate around, and then we're at purl two. And we start again. Make sure you don't accidentally twist those stitches when you put them to your cable needle. It's very easy to accidentally do that. And then finish off your repeat. All right, and I'm back to the start of my round. I know that because of my marker that's down there or if I find my tail. My tail indicates the start of my round. So that's it. You just did your first round of cables. Not too difficult, right? Here's the thing. When you work cables, you don't have to do them every round, which is fantastic. So now that you've done your cable round, all you need to do is work rounds three, four, and five in pattern. When I say in pattern, all that means is you will do knit six, purl two, all the way around. When you get to the end of round five and ready to start round six, that's when we introduce another round of cables. Go ahead and complete your, your leg of your sock all the way through round five. Once you have finished round five and you're ready to begin round six, we will work in pattern around, only this time we will do a two by two right cable. For the two by two right cable, we start off with a knit two. So I will start off by knitting two stitches. Now I will take two stitches from my left hand needle and slip them onto my cable needle as if to purl and this time I want to hold my cable needle to the back. See how it's to the back of my work? Okay, it's to the back of my work. I will knit the next two stitches off of my left hand needle. Just like before, I will take those slip stitches that are on my cable needle and place those back onto my left hand needle and knit them. See, I'm just trading their places, you guys. That's all a cable is. It's so simple. Okay, so then I knit two. I finish off with my purl two for my repeat. I rotate my work clockwise and I'm ready to begin my repeat again. So I will start with my knit two. Take my cable needle, place two stitches onto my cable needle and hold those to the back. Knit two stitches from my left hand needle. Place those stitches from my cable needle back onto my double point. And then knit them. Finish off my repeat with a purl two. You will repeat these instructions all the way around. And if you come to a point in the pattern where you have to move stitches to another needle in order to uh, work out the cable just like we did on round two, you can do that. I'm actually coming up to a point in the pattern right now, so let me show you how to do it. 
I'm ready to work my stitch pattern, which is knit two, and then it's time for me to do a cable. Well, I don't want to have my cable split between two needles, so once again, I will go ahead and I'm going to place those two stitches over onto this needle. Okay, so now I have all the stitches I need to complete my cable right here, all right? So now that I've done that, I will go ahead, slip these two stitches onto my cable needle, hold those to the back, make sure I grab my fifth needle, and let's see here, that cable needle wants to stick into my ring. I will knit one and knit two, bring these stitches back up into play by putting those on my left hand needle and then knitting those two. Okay, so I just move those stitches over so that way I can make sure that the cable is all worked together. If as you go along in the pattern you find you have to move stitches over at other points, that's okay. If you find as you're working the following rounds of the leg that you have to move stitches from one needle to another, don't hesitate to do so. It's more important that you have all those stitches on one needle in order to create that cable stitch. Go ahead and finish those stitches the way you need to in order to get the full cable stitch. When you have finished round six, you will notice that all you have to do now is do rounds seven and eight, which are knit six, purl two. Then you would start off again with round one of your cable pattern, which again is the knit six, purl two, and then you do another cable round. So in essence, you are only going to do a cable round every fourth round. To finish the leg of your sock, you will repeat rounds one through eight until you've completed a total of 32 rounds. So at this point, I need you to finish the leg of the sock and then join me for video two to learn how to prep for the heel and then we'll do the heel flap, the heel turn, and the gusset all in video two. Go ahead, you're doing a really great job. I'll see you then. Congratulations, you're almost there. You've tackled DPNs, you've tackled cables. Now all you need to do is tackle your homework. Finish part one and join me for part two of this three-part series. And as always, don't forget, smash that like button as my kids say. Bye guys.